Case 18 is a 40-year-old woman with headache when straining. Here you can see a T2-weighted MR through the frame of magnum. Coronal T1. Now a saturated old T2. Some additional T1 images through the lower skull base and the upper cervical spine. I'm not going to tell you what these images are just yet. So your question is, what is the most likely diagnosis? And what additional finding would make this a Chiari 2? So what additional thing that you need to have? Is it an occipital encephalocele, a lumbar meningocele, absence of the corpus callosum, or hypoplastic optic nerves? Finally, you have a third question on this one. What can easily mimic a Chiari malformation? Is it Lermite Duclos, cerebellar hemangioblastoma, intracranial hypotension, or hereditary cerebellar ataxia? So this case is a case of Chiari malformation. This is a congenital condition when the cerebellar tonsils extend through the foramen magnum. Now there are different cutoffs for measurements that you may see, but around five or six millimeters below the frame and magnum is probably the most likely that you are to see as abnormal. And then the key word that you may see for this is peg-like appearance of the tonsils, or maybe think of them as triangular or sort of plug-like. Now there are combination syndromes when you have a Chiari 2, that's when you have tonsillar herniation plus a lumbar meningocele or myelomeningocele. If you have it in the occipital region, then that's uh, Chiari 3. Now Chiari 3s you don't really see because they are generally fatal. So here you see the axial T2 images that I show you. The arrow shows you at the level of the frame and magnum, you've got a lot of cerebellar tonsils there sticking through. And you're just going to see more of that on the additional images. Here you see the tonsils are coming well through the frame and magnum, which is more up here. Uh, if you were to take a measurement, you would draw a line across here and then measure how low it goes uh, below the frame and magnum. So this is uh, probably a centimeter below. Here you can see the posterior arch of C1. So you're all the way down to the posterior arch of C1. So it's pretty dramatic. Now in an image like this, it's important to look at the cella and look at the pituitary because conditions that can mimic a Chiari malformation are conditions of pressure abnormality. So if you have really elevated intracranial pressure or spontaneous intracranial uh, hypotension and low pressure, you can have uh, sagging tonsils. So either of those will cause uh, abnormalities of the pituitary, so be looking for that. Uh, IIH or pseudotumor patients have an enlarged cella with a lot of CSF. Uh, hypotension patients have an enlarged pituitary and kind of sagging midbrain. So be looking for those secondary signs. Here you just see I've placed an arrow on that so you can see truly how low these tonsils are going. And then the peg-like configuration is this kind of triangular wedge shape. And that's what you're going to see most commonly. Uh, so this is a phase contrast uh, flow study. So you're looking for flow through the frame of magnum. Uh, this is gated to the cardiac cycle. So what you'll see is uh, you'll see flow that varies through the cardiac cycle and should be bi-directional, should go in both directions. So here you see the flow anterior to the brainstem and here you see flow, or in this case, absence of flow posterior to the brainstem. So there's no flow back there simply because it's very full. Now patients that are more uh, symptomatic uh, are more likely to have no flow. And then these patients are also patients that are more likely to benefit from decompression. So your answer to your questions are a Chiari 2 has a lumbar finding, so lumbar meningocele or myelomeningocele. And your third question is uh, intracranial hypotension can mimic a Chiari malformation, and we talked a little bit about that. So you want to look for secondary signs of intracranial pressure abnormalities.